Hello, welcome to the half term activity day. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to be doing four different activities and there'll be a title at the beginning of each section to help you find your way around the video. You can do them in any order you like and remember you can stop and start the video whenever you need to, okay? Um, if there are any problems, just please get in touch. My email address is at the end of the, the video. So what we'll do is we're going to move the camera now so that you can have a better view of what's going on. And I hope you enjoy the activities and have fun. And I shall be back in a minute to get started. Okay, here we go then. Uh, this activity is doing some rainbow scratch art, which I hope you're going to enjoy. So we have a, a little wooden tool or a stylus, which is what we're going to be using to scrape the designs onto our cards. Here are a couple that I did to try out some ideas and, and to see what sort of designs I could do. So I shall pop a picture of those in with your pack. To, to help you, but I'm sure you'll have plenty of your own ideas anyway. Now, the important things in here, now I have put these in a poly pocket and I need to remind you to handle them carefully because the black surface is quite delicate and I found that, you know, I only just have to catch it with a nail and it does scratch away the black. But it's not a big problem, but just for you to be aware to handle them carefully. And I've put in four of these these size boards for you. Okay, so you've got four, four goes at making some nice designs. And I've also put in one of these small ones just for you to have a try really, to try out some patterns and pictures. And basically you can do whatever ever you like. It's entirely up to you, okay? Um, and yeah, so I'm sure you all know what to do as I expect you've done them before. But basically you use your wooden tool um, and just make the marks and what we're doing is we're scraping away the black surface I can do some I might do some more little hearts these are just things I was doing earlier while I was having a little practice um, so we can do a heart we can do zigzags here I've got some zigzags and you can do thick lines you can do thin lines you can use the tool more upright you can you can use it like that so really whatever ever you like just have a little go have a little practice and um, see what you end up with what I will remind you about it is does make a bit of a mess because when we do the scraping we have bits of black coming off because that's that's how we're making up the picture we're scraping away the black to show the lovely rainbow colors underneath so just be aware it is a little bit messy so you can either tap them onto a piece of card or a bit of scrap paper or just sweep them up at the end clean your surface at the end when you've finished i don't think i need to say anything else about that i'll just let you get on with it um, and hopefully you'll enjoy making some lovely rainbow designs okay brilliant have fun and i'll see you later with the next activity Right, here we are. So this, this is just an extra little activity that I, I put in because I thought it might be a bit of fun and just an extra thing for you to do. Um, I've given you some cardboard shapes of people and you've got a couple of dinosaurs and you've got a couple of butterflies. And I've also, well, you've got your felt pens and your pencil, which have come in your box anyway. Um, and I've also put some wobbly eyes in because they're quite fun, aren't they? And these are all, they're, they're ready sticky, so you don't need to use any glue or anything. These ones here on this little strip, you just peel them off, okay? And I've, I popped some on the, the, the people just to see what they looked like. And I also popped one on my, uh, on my butterfly or moth, whatever you would like it to be. I'm just going to stick another one on there now because that's quite fun. So I'm not going to talk to you too much about this, but because uh, I, th I think you'll just have your own ideas and um, perhaps come up with some 
crazy characters. One thing I did think is they make, might make nice simple puppets. So something you might like to do is, and I just tried this out for the dinosaur, I found an old tissue box and I just cut it into strips and then I took my strip and I, I just folded it along the middle, popped some sellotape around it just to make it a bit stronger and then with just a piece of sellotape I popped it on the back of my dinosaur and there I've got a, a very simple puppet. So if that's something you'd like to do then you can easily do that with any of these or you could hang them up. You can do both sides of course so I mean you, you might like to do a happy face on one side, you might like to do a sad face so that you've got two different sides to it but yeah all of them really they're double sided so if you want to make them to hang you can or you can put them up in your room or give them away whatever you think you'd like to do okay so I'm going to let you get on now um, and come up with your own ideas and I shall see you later for the next activity you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to spin my whizzer. What we're going to be doing in this little activity is we're going to make a whizzer. In fact you'll be if you want to you'll be able to make two because I've included enough materials for you to make two of them. I was trying to get it to spin fast enough so that you'd hear it making a, a noise. It's just starting now to make a humming noise. So, right, I'm going to put that down now. So that's what we're going to have a go at making, okay? And they, they are good fun to play with um, and they're interesting to watch. I expect you've probably made them before, but hopefully you're going to enjoy making these today. So, you'll need your felt pens and possibly your pencil. Okay, um, and in your pack you have got, you've got two of these cardboard discs or circles, each have got the holes punched in ready for you. You will have two pieces of string, I've used one of them for the one I made to show you, and you will also have four metal rings, okay, which I will explain about in a minute. And I've also put some stickers in because it's entirely up to you, but you might, rather than colouring in your wizards, or you might like to colour in one and, and put some stickers on the other one and, and see, see how it comes out. But they're just there if you want to use them, and if you want to use them for something else, then that's absolutely fine. Because remember, as we always say, there's no right or wrong. I give you ideas, um, and then you just you go ahead with your, with your own ideas. Okay, so this one here that I, I did earlier, I tried using the two primary colours because I was thinking about when we mix paint, um, if we mix red and yellow, we get orange, as you'll remember, I'm sure, and I'm sure you know that if we mix blue and yellow, we get green, which is one of the secondary colours. So what I was trying to see is if when this when it's spinning round, if the red and yellow side looks orange and if the blue and yellow side looks green, it's quite hard for you to see on the film. But that's something you can bear in mind uh, when you come to choose how to decorate your cardboard circles. And I'm sure you'll be, remember that if you use all the colours of the rainbow, that when it spins, I'm pretty sure it turns, it looks white. Okay, uh, anyway, you can have a think about how you want to decorate. Let's have a look at how we're going to make them. Now, the metal rings we've put in to make it a bit easier to hold, because what I remember is when you've got your wizard spinning, sometimes it spins so much that the string gets a bit tight around your fingers. So we thought, oh, 
or maybe we'll um, upgrade it a little bit and we'll use these plastic rings so that you've just got a little handle on each end and it actually works quite well and it's quite comfortable on your fingers. So now decorating wise, I decorated mine before I put it together, but you don't have to do that. You can choose. You can put the string on and the rings first of all, have a little go with it if you want to, or you can do your decorating and then put it together. But I'm quickly now going to show you how to put it together. So I'm picking up my piece of string and if you look at both ends of your string, you will see that on one end I have put a little bit of sellotape, which is just to make it easier for you to thread it through the holes. I'll put that spare one there. Um, but as I say, you, you'll have enough to make two of them if you'd like to, okay? <clears throat> so I've got my disc, I've got my bit of string with a little bit of sellotape there. And the first thing is I'm going to thread one of the rings through and obviously we need to make sure it doesn't come off the other end, okay? So then we will go through one hole of the whizzer, then we're going to pick up the other ring and thread that through. And then what we need to do now is we need to go back through the other hole, pull it carefully through, and then we need to find our two ends. Now this is where it might be a little bit tricky. Sometimes tying knots can be a little bit fiddly. But if I show you how I do it, um, you can have a go. And if it's too tricky, well, you can ask for a bit of help, can't you? So I just hold it and I bring the end round my finger. So I'm making a loop on my finger and I'm crossing the strings over, whether you can see that. And then I just pull it off my finger so that I've got a loop. And then the end that's sticking up, the two ends of the string, I just bring them round and I push them through the hole and then we just tighten it up and that makes our knot, okay? Give it a go and if it's too tricky, then I'm sure you've got somebody there that can give you a hand. And then what we need to do now is see if it works. Obviously I haven't decorated this one, but that doesn't matter because you can do that yours in your own time with your own ideas. So what we need to do is make sure we've got, we have the knot up by the metal ring, either side, it doesn't really matter. Then I just hold up the rings and make sure that I've got the, the cardboard disc in the middle. And then this is where you might need to practice for a bit because when I started off, I wasn't very good at it and I have been practicing quite a lot so that I could do it properly for you in my video. So we give it a little twist like this and then what we do, we bring gently bring our hands in and out. I'm sure you know, oh, I've let go of that one. Look, I let go of it. So I'll pick it back up and carry on. I'm sure you know exactly what to do. Um, and then we bring our hands in and out and it spins. And if we do it quite fast, we can even get a whooshing sound. So really, that's it. Now I'm going to stop that now. I'm going to put it down. And I don't think I need to say anything else to you about that. Um, you've got everything you need. And um, yeah, have fun and happy whizzing. Perhaps you'll have some competitions to see who can keep your whizzer going for longest and um, perhaps you'll experiment with colours and see how things change when it's spinning round so fast. Okay, there we are then. Bye for now and I'll see you later for the next activity. Excellent, well done. Right then. Shall we have a look at our Tangram pictures? You may have seen Tangrams before. If, if you have or haven't, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to explain to you what a Tangram is. Um, and basically, a Tangram is a square shape that's been cut up like a, a puzzle into other shapes, into seven different shapes, in fact. And I've got this wooden one here, so I can show you the pieces. Hopefully you can see these bigger pieces okay on your screen. So we've got two big triangles, 
and we've got a medium triangle and two small triangles. So five triangles in total and one square and one of these which is a parallelogram. That's quite hard to say, isn't it? So all of those shapes all fit together to make a square. But there's something else, apart from the fact that they make a nice puzzle, there's something else very clever about tangrams. Because with these seven shapes, we can make all sorts of pictures. And I must admit, while I've been on looking on the internet to find some ideas for, for doing this activity, I'm absolutely amazed at how many things we can make, how many pictures we can make, in fact, using these seven shapes. So that's what we're going to do today for this activity, okay? So, as you can see, I've done some sheets for you with some ideas um, of some of the, the pictures that we can make. Um, so we'll leave those there for a minute and we'll have a look at them again when I've shown you the other things. So you will have a bag that includes a Pritt stick. It's a Pritt stick with a piece of blue tack stuck on the top and I'll explain about that a little bit later on when we get started. We've got a little bag with plastic pieces in, which I will explain about in a minute. We have got a stamp. Okay, we'll put that there for a minute. And we've got four little bags which have cardboard tangram shapes in them. These have all been cut out of card on a laser cutter and each one fits together just like the wooden puzzle and it, make, it makes a, a square. So those are what we're going to use to make our pictures. Okay, I've also given you two cards and envelopes because I did think you might like to make a tangram picture and make it into a card to send to a special person perhaps. But that's up to you. If you want to use the cards to make a different kind of card, then of course that's absolutely fine. But you've got your stamp if you want to use it to send something away to somebody. And I've also put in two pieces of ordinary plain A4 card, which you might like to use, okay? So here in this little bag, the plastic pieces, this is just a little puzzle that my husband has made for you on his 3D printer. And of course this you will be able to keep. So just as the wooden puzzle fits together into the square, these colours are slightly different, but it works in exactly the same way. We've got seven shapes, five triangles, one square, and one parallelogram and they fit together if I can get them in the right order they do slide about a bit but that's okay I'll put the parallelogram there and the triangle there so there we are so you've got your own little puzzle that you can you can keep so we'll pop those to one side and let's get started and think about making a card so as you can see from your sheets, all sorts of things. We can make rockets, we can make buildings, we can make people, we can make cats, dogs, butterflies, boats, aeroplanes, all sorts of things and many, many more. But we'll just concentrate for now on this, the bigger sheet. Um, and I'll just do one with you just to show you and give you a few tips, okay? I quite like the cats, so I'm going to start with a cat and I shall start with this cat here, which is the cat sitting up. But what I'll do first, I'm just going to use the wooden blocks so that you can see it more clearly because it's, they're quite large, aren't they? So I'm getting my two big triangles. I'm getting my medium triangle. You can start any end you like. You can start from the top and work up at bottom and work up or you can start at the top it's entirely up to you again there's no right or wrong I've got my small triangles and I'm putting them down there for the cat's pointy ears and then to finish off we put the parallelogram here to make the tail cool 
beautiful, isn't it? So I'm going to do that here on my card. Now this is where the bit of blue tack comes in handy because you might want to try some different pictures before you decide what you want to stick down. And sometimes it's quite hard to get them in exactly the right place. And of course, once we use the print stick and stick them down, then it's really quite hard to get them off and they get spoilt. So I found that if I use a little tiny bit of blue tack, then I can just put them in place. And if I don't have them in quite the right place on the, the card or the paper, I can just move them around, okay? So I'm going to spread the shapes out and I think I'll start at the top with this one. So I'll need the square for the head and I'll sort of try and get it in roughly the right place. And I need the two small triangles for the ears. And remember they are, they're, they're the same on both sides. So you might just have to turn them round to get them pointing the right way. So let's put a little blob of blue tack on there. And it's brand new blue tack that I cut out of a fresh packet just for you. There we are, so two pointy ears. And here's the cat's face. Of course, if you want to, you can put features on. You don't have to leave them plain. Again, it's absolutely up to you to do whatever you would like. Right, so we'll make sure we've got the triangle the right way round. So that's like the chest of the cat. And then we want one of the bigger triangles there to sort of make its back. A bit more blue tack. Stick it down. And then we need our other big triangle. Yeah, that's right. Now, I just noticed what's happened here. I'm a bit too close to the side of the card, aren't I? It's too close to the edge and the tail's going to stick out. So what have I got to do? Move it across. So I'm going to take these off. And what I shall do, I think I'll put the tail on and that bottom triangle. And that will help me to know if I've got it in the right place. So that's a shows you why it's quite good just to use the little bit of blue tack before you're sure you've got everything in the right place so that's better so then I can go back with this one and this oh hang on this one needs to move first doesn't it this one needs to go here yep yeah. then I can put the the face in and then I can put my two ears where they need where they need to be. There we are. And of course you can do some background around it if you want to do any colouring or draw some things. Again that's that's absolutely up to you. And when you're happy with a design and you think oh yes I want to stick with that one well of course you can get your print stick and and stick it on permanently and as I say you've got three more little packs of shapes that you can use play around with and I expect probably come up with some ideas of your own I hope you find them fun um, and I hope you enjoy playing with the little plastic puzzle that Colin made for you and the wooden one well the wooden one I bought it from Amazon and it it was it didn't cost very much at all and I I, I do quite like it, so I'm glad I bought that. Um, so there we are, that's enough from me for now. So I will leave you to enjoy your Tangram pictures. Okay, bye for now then.